I don't know, like a, a late night TV show announcer. It's book club. <laughs> or how about uh, we'll get Hank Jr. Na, 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 na. We'll get Hank Jr. <laughs> to write a song for us. Are you ready for some book club? <laughs> I like that. I, like I don't think that. he's doing much these days, is he? That that would that would run the the risk of getting real racist real quick. True that. Well, let's just for now. Let's just say, welcome to book club. Welcome to book club. Welcome to book club. Well, this is my week. Uh, let me inter- well, we, I think we should introduce ourselves, so let's start all over. Uh, let us first introduce ourselves. I'm Ansel Crowder. I picked the book this week. I'm uh, Elijah Crowder. I'll pick the book next week. And I think there's one more. And I'm Dylan Crowder, and I'll pick the book two weeks from now, maybe. Well, there we go. And um, we are Book Club. We are. So this week's book... Uh, you know, this is our inaugural episode, and I thought it was um, I, th- I thought it was mutually agreed upon, but it turns out I picked it myself. Um, <laughs> the catcher, the catcher in the rye, a classic coming of age, not really coming of age, came of age tale by uh, Jerome David Salinger. Uh, where to oh, begin? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, I made a mistake. I actually okay. read Catcher in the Rye, W-R-Y, by Bob Euchre. <laughs> <laughs> well. Which, I mean, I think I can make that work. Well, either you'll have to adapt or me and Elijah will have to adapt. <laughs> well, we can just roll with it, yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I'm not, I'm going to, I, I want to hear you guys' opinion because we kind of, you kind of told me a little bit how you felt about it. I kind of want to hear that first, and then I want to shoot shoot your opinions down because uh, <laughs> oh, because I thought it was a terrific, okay. fantastic, amazing book. Uh, yeah. But we'll start we'll, uh, we'll, uh, whichever well, one. I'll go. I'll go first, Dylan. You you did some research, right? So you've got you've got that whole aspect of it. Um, yeah, yeah, and I and I knew absolutely nothing about it going into it, other than. Uh, People who read it tend to shoot other people. That was that was the only thing I'd really heard about it. And uh Yeah, so I didn't hate it per se. Uh I didn't outright hate it and I didn't love it either. I just kinda there's expected this big splash of uh literature and there was a little trickle of uh teen angst and not much else, to tell you the truth. So I'm done. I'll see you guys next week. Uh. <laughs> Here, this is my second time reading this book, and the first time I read it, I was I was in my early twenties, and I did not care for it at all. Um, and I think my main problem with it was that um, I just did not give a hoot about the main character. He uh, he kind of kind of rubbed me the wrong way. The this time when I read it, it was pretty much the exact same deal. Except I did have some empathy for him because towards the very end of the book, it became abundantly clear that he was suffering from uh, some sort of severe uh, mental illness brought on by you know watching uh, watching that kid kill himself. And also the death of his younger brother. Right. And and I think that might, I'm sorry, go ahead. I I, I still just, I didn't care. I didn't care for the character at all. Like, and yeah. And since the entire story is told from his, his point of view, it, it made it really hard for me to enjoy 
anything he had to say. Okay. Well, let me say let me say this. I, I read it I was probably about thirteen or fourteen when I first read it. And I just thought it was cool because I'd never read anything that that had that much profanity in it, you know, I was like, whoa, this is, it was so like punk rock, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> uh, but it didn't really stick with me. So I'm 34 now reading it for the first time in, you know, about 20 years. And, uh, I, I, I get what you're saying, Dylan, the characters, uh, irritating. It's not somebody you enjoy, but I don't think, I mean, it's, I think it's an amazing portrait of somebody that age going through, that experience like you said yeah he was clearly suffering from uh, witnessing his classmates suicide and uh, his brother dying of leukemia but it's like I mean you you're you you're told you're told the story from his perspective over well like the 30 36 hours or whatever and it's like you, it's like you know everything about that character you know it's just like such a good like a good character actor in a movie Um who just like sort of, I mean, you get a complete perfect sense of, you know, holding Caulfield. I, I don't know. I think that might be why I like the book is because Salinger did such a good job of um, sort of presenting this character. And like, I don't know. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, I can agree with that. Mainly because one of the main reasons I, I dislike the character is because he he does seem very genuine like if he didn't have that that quality of realness like I probably wouldn't have really cared about him either way I would have been indifferent so he, he was a well developed well written character yeah and I mean he's just like he's completely screwed up you know it's like he tried to you know or he says he's, he tried to like kill his roommate by knocking his toothbrush it, you know, into his throat or something like that. And then at the end of the book, he's like, I, I miss that guy. You know what I mean? He's just, yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I think, uh, I, th- I think Salinger did a fantastic job. Yeah. I'm going to have to stop you there. It's, it, I, I'm going to wholly disagree with that. I just, the, the, uh, the idea of him being a well-written character. Yeah. I can buy that, but he's such an asshole. I mean, even for a teenager. Yeah. The guy is 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 just uh, unsympathetic to everything. The way he treats uh, what's her face when he when he takes her to the movie or and just yeah, the way, Sally Hayes, his, yeah, yeah, his own rambling thoughts about you know oh the oh everything's so lousy, everything's so phony. You know, like, you know, I knew guys like that in high school, and I was like, yeah, people did punch those people, and you know, maybe he maybe maybe he is a uh, manically depressed when he's gone through a lot of stuff but geez man what a jerk i just okay. i found the character completely unlikable and and it, I, here's me, a counterpoint sort of a put off from the book L- let me let me frame it in this way okay i think uh maybe the character is a jerk but i, I kind of like there's a there's a part where um it's like after his roommate sort of like beats him to a bloody pulp he goes to the, his sweet mate's room and he wants to, you know, he wants to play cards with him and he's like bleeding all over the place. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, it's so like ridiculous and sort of unsettling and funny all at the same time. You know, it's it sort of reminded me of like a, like a Wes Anderson movie or something like that. You know what I mean? It's like, I think it, yeah, I, 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 I kind of read did the, certainly get a, a Wes Anderson Rushmore kind of feel from the whole thing. Yeah, definitely. And, I, and you know, after that scene, I kind of read it that way. And, you know, like some of his characters, like Wes Anderson's characters are, are jerks or, you know, who we, you wouldn't want to associate with in normal life. But but they're funny. They're funny. Like this dude's pretty insufferable. Yeah, I didn't find him funny. He was not he was not the kid from Rushmore. He was not that funny. OK, yeah. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. <laughs> No, I get your point, I, and, and I agree. Really fleshed out, really well. You can actually get a sense of the character from the way it's written, and and that's interesting because I didn't I didn't think of it that way. And now that you say you've read it as a Wes Anderson film, I think maybe I should read it again. But I'm I'm just not gonna not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just my, you know, my um, 
you know the the, the sorts of the, the kind of aesthetic that I like. I, I like things that are like pretty sad, but also funny and like beautiful all at the same time. And I think this book kind of pulled at my heartstrings that way and in, in, in the right directions and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I am a fan Holden Caulfield fan might get a tattoo. <laughs> you, you would be, you would be because, and I had this thought while I was reading this book, Holden Caulfield, he's really just a hipster. And like he is, it, at first I thought he was probably the first hipster. <laughs> the way he, you know, derides anything that's remotely popular. Oh, it's phony. That's phony. And, you know, no, I was true. into, I was into this jazz club before it was popular. Now it's just full of phonies. Um, but then a, a scarier thought occurred to me. What what if there's always been hipsters? Like <laughs> like going going back to the the plains of Africa at the dawn of man. Like this this one jerk too cool for school sees gaz- these his tribe mates chasing gazelles until they die from exhaustion. He's like, "No. Nah, you all some phonies. I'm going to throw this pointed stick at these dudes." And <laughs> It worked, and he's like, "Holy shit, this is the hot new thing!" But that's been the driving force of human evolution, hipsterism. Like, yeah, <laughs> and I, I, it, it makes a lot of sense as to why we are. You where sound we like are you're today. too cool to get into the driving force behind human evolution. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So you're kind of just like a part of the driving force of human evolution. Cause that's such a hipster thing to say, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and there's, there is no escape from it. Hmm. Ir- ironically hipster forever. <laughs> that is a disconcerting. It's hipsters thought. all the way down. Well, all right, let's, let me, let me try to get us on a different train of discussion here. Was there a particular scene that you really liked from the book? Scene might not be the right word, but is there a particular chapter or mm-hmm. occurrence that really kind of struck a chord with you? Um, I wouldn't say a particular scene that I love, but a particular scene that did stick out was the uh, when he stays at his teacher's house. I was about to say that. Uh, that yeah, I I still kind of came out of that like, what the hell really happened there? You know, just um, was the guy perverted or you know trying some funny stuff or was Holden just maybe uh, I don't know in his own little world as he as he is through most of the book. Uh, what do you guys think about that? That that kind of left me asking more questions than. Well, I mean, I guess if you think about his interaction with other characters, I think he has everybody else wrong, too. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I don't think he actually treats anybody the way they deserve to be treated, except maybe uh, the girl that he's it's never just, in the mood to call, you know, like uh, Jane Gallagher, yeah. who keeps her checkers in the back row. He's like, I thought about calling her, but I just wasn't in the mood. Maybe that was the right way to treat her, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, th- I don't think his teacher, you know, I, I just think his teacher probably cared about him and he just, didn't yeah, know how he, to... he was drunk and, and actually gave a shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the only other, the only other thing it could have been is an unreliable narrator sort of thing where he didn't say exactly what happened, but I, I like your read of it. Like, he, he's got everybody else wrong. So he, totally misconstrued that that situation as well yeah you know that's kind of the way i i mean i had that feeling but i couldn't really put my finger on why it just seemed like okay this guy was actually trying to take care of him and he and he bails on him and saying he's up to funny stuff and i was like you know no maybe not maybe yeah, i don't know maybe. you kind of want to give that teacher the benefit of the doubt because he's like you know trying to help him you know yeah right yeah what about you, Dylan? Anything that sticks out to you other than that? Um, sticks out. I mean, there's bound to be something in no. a Bob Euchre book that sticks out. 
<laughs> well, I mean, I, I really did like the part where he was talking about the the filming of Major League. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. that that was some interesting inside information. Yeah, the um, Charlie Sheen. I tell you what. Yeah, there's, there's uh, whole chapters yeah. on on the coke binges they used to used to go on. That, mm. I, I haven't read that book. I can't cast aspersions. <laughs> but I imagine, I imagine. <laughs> I mean, if you're hanging out with Charlie Sheen, you're gonna do coke. Yeah, he's a phony. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you, Ansel? You have anything stick out to you? Well, the, the toward the end. I mean, there there are several things that uh, I thought were were great, but yeah, you know, toward the end where he's waiting for his sister and he's he's panicked that she might she might not have gotten his note, which was a crazy ass note to to send to a ten year old sister, you know? Yeah, here here uh, that you're about to skip town and you want to give her Christmas money back, but um, you know when she when he finally sees her coming down the street hauling this luggage that's you know twice the size of her. And, you know, she's saying she's going to go out west with him. I, I just thought it was a, you know, just a, just a, an amazingly, like, beautiful type thing. Um, uh, I will I, I will admit that, that that pulled at some strings at me as well. Uh, yeah. And that was that was well done. And uh, I was, you know, I was hoping it would go where it ended up going, where he took her home. And, and, and it did. So I will say that the ending was at least an ending. Yeah, and and yeah, at the end, you know, he's or at the, at the beginning too, but he's you know he, he's getting help and he's going back to school. You know, it's like uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just um, it's a happy story, really. Yeah. Um, so I, I've got a question. You, you said earlier that it was like thirty six hours. That, yeah, that I, well, I tried to pay attention to that, life, isn't it? Well, I mean, well, he's he's writing it like from a, I guess from like a, what do you call it, like a rehab <laughs> facility type, right? I'm not sure what the technical name for it is, but yeah, he just says he's sick or something. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, but he's sort, he's sort of recalling. It's a of- I mean, and the, the the story is like from the time he gets kicked out of uh, Pensy Prep to like just a couple of days later. You know, that's all over the course of you know. It's like he's he's going to, you know, it's it's like it's like a anti adventure book. It's like he's he's leaving the school he gets kicked out of to go to New York city, but he lives there and knows everything about it. It's not like an adventure. He's going there to, uh, sort of get wasted and sulk, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, it's like an anti, anti adventure type story, but it's, it's all over the course of like, I was thinking about 36 hours because it's just from that Saturday where he's at Pensy with the football game and he leaves. And I think it's like Monday when he, it was, his sister is at school on Monday when she she comes down the street hauling the luggage. So, yeah, I mean, like in that thirty six hours, you know, I think he starts the book saying that, you know, I'm not going to tell you all this crap about me, but just in that sp- spending thirty six hours in his head, just like you know everything about him. You know what I mean? Right. Then yeah, I mean. That is, it does seem like more of a feat now that you put it that way. I I didn't really think about it being such a short span of time, but uh, it totally is. That's that's interesting. I was just trying to think if I've ever had thirty six hours that were as nuts as this. I think we, I think all three of us probably have. I'm not no, sure I just remember me? <laughs> enough of it to speak about it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, pretty crazy. No, I, I can't think of a thirty-six hour period. <laughs> Pe- period, like I guess that means I need to lay off the the memory juice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So maybe you're right. Interesting. Well, I've got some. Uh, I've got some pages folded. Um, so there's like, I guess. There were interesting things, you know. I, I read it two weeks ago, so. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that, part of that, my problem. That was my I, fault. I read it Sorry two weeks that. ago, and uh, I <laughs> took it back. To, I had to take it back to the library, so I do not actually have the book with me. Yeah, that was that was my fault. I kept getting uh, sidetracked. I apologize for that. No worries. I've got. Like Won't I said, happen again. Some, 
some pages uh, folded at the corners, which means to me something there was important at one time. Um, I'll, uh, if you want, I can s- s- we can throw things out, and you guys tell me what you think. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right. Um, early in the book, it's like page twelve. Uh, he says, uh, "People always think something's all true. I don't give a damn, except that I get bored." When people tell me to act my age, I'm paraphrasing here, yeah. Um, sometimes I act a lot older than I am, but people never notice it. People never notice anything. And I thought, there, there you go, right there. There's your hipster quote of the year, you know, the people never See, notice anything. I mean, early on, I mean, right from, like, right off the bat, I was like, this is a guy who's, like, screwed up. He can't really, he doesn't really know what he's saying or doing. You know what I mean? He doesn't have that kind of self-control or self-monitoring so you know does that make sense like yeah it sounds yeah, like he, a basic he, teenager yeah i mean that that doesn't it doesn't surprise me that i don't remember him saying that in the book but that's so holding caulfield you know what i mean so holding caulfield <laughs> So holding. all right well here's another um here's another quote now I, I want you to tell me who this sounds like I'm the most terrific liar you ever saw in your life. It's awful. If I'm on my way to the store to buy a magazine and somebody asks me where I'm going, I'm liable to say I'm going to the opera. Yeah. Now, th- this kind of reminds me of, of another problem that I had with this character is that he, he, he does lie. He lies an awful lot and then calls everybody else out for being phony like right that doesn't make a goddamn bit of sense yeah well i mean that's the character you know what i'm saying again that's how mixed up and incoherent and you know just to you know that level of well i guess it's not cognitive dissonance if you don't recognize it as such but i mean that's just a uh that's just again. That's just so holding Caulfield. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> He's just so cool. That's so. That's so holding. <laughs> is that is that our new thing? <laughs> For the next ten minutes, maybe. All right, nice. Uh, I was I was thinking like a, a Nickelodeon TV show adaptation. That's so holding. <laughs> Careful. Well, actually, I mean. You just made me think. Reading this as a, you know, I, I was a, a teenager. Yeah, I actually read it. Uh, our our cousin, um, told us once that this was his favorite book. Like we went on a vacation, or it was like we were going to a family reunion, and uh, our cousin told us that it was his favorite book. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I'm, like, I'm going to go read that when I get home. Mom had a copy of The Catcher in the Rye. Uh, I read it and I thought it was amazing like as a kid because, you know, I never read a book that said, uh, or I guess any, I could choose any swear word here, but you, you know what I mean? I, I obviously heard all of them, but to read a book where it was just, um, you know, potty mouthed. Yeah. I, mean, and I liked it for that. I, could, I, it I had now. no empathy for the character, but, you know, reading it now, I totally do. Right. Uh, reading it now, as far as the profanity goes, maybe I'm just so desensitized to it. I, I, it really didn't register for me. Yeah, sure. As as profane, like it, it was pretty pretty buttoned up. Well, do you know what year it came out? I don't remember what year it came out, but it surely. I mean, it probably was. I mean, I think it made it might have been like the Pulp Fiction of its day or something like that. You know, because it's so irreverent, I guess. Do you know, do you, do uh, copyright you know 1945 you is what I'm looking at. Yeah. yeah, I saw a documentary on Salinger about 10 years ago where I think he, he was writing it like in the trenches of World War II or, or like during that time. I think that's what it said. It was a long time ago. I think Dylan's got a – you got the stuff – you got the dirty on the book, right? Uh, I do, and I'll have to tell you, like my internet connection – Went a little crazy just a second ago, so I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, y'all sounded like some robots there for a minute. Yeah, you're kind of breaking up a little bit too, but I could—I I heard what you were saying. Mm-hmm. So, what, what y'all need to know? 
Yeah, um, is that true? Did he, was he writing it in the trenches? I can neither confirm nor deny that. Um, <laughs> I, I, like he, from what I gathered, this book was kind of using characters and themes that he had been publishing for a while in the, um, uh, in like, uh, publications. Um, and I don't know if he ever actually was in the, okay. Yeah, no, he was in the 12th infantry regiment. Hmm. He was present on Utah beach on D-Day. He was in the battle of bulge. In the Battle of Hirtgen Forest. And and this is the best book he could come up with after all that? Yeah, for real. Like all all the other like I I mean World War One gave us Tolkien to for to Christ's sake. Yeah. Or Vonnegut yeah, or Tolkien like, or you, geez, yeah, war's yeah. supposed to make a writer out of you. Honestly, guys, I'm not gonna sit here and have you talk down to <laughs> the catcher of the ride. It's an American classic. It's a brilliant novel. Uh, yeah, well, you know, Holden Caulfield says it himself on page 94. People always clap for the wrong things. If I were a piano <laughs> player, if I were a piano player, I'd play it in the goddamn closet. <laughs> well, I really wish yeah. I really wish JD Salinger had written this in the closet and left it. There. <laughs> well, he I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I think he wrote all of his other novels in the closet because I, I don't think he released anything after this because of uh, Oh, no, right. Yeah, he, he has he had he had filing cabinets full of manuscripts. Yeah. So your But this was the only thing that came to light, really. Well, he had some short stories. I read a few of his short stories a while back. I, mm-hmm. I thought those were good too, but um Yeah, I think I you know I, I don't think people really know for sure. Like again, I, I I saw this documentary ten years ago, so it's pretty fuzzy. But it's it's almost like he he uh continued to write. Yeah, you know, but he just never published anything because he didn't. He didn't. It was almost like people. He didn't feel people deserved to to read it if they were going to be. They're going to be like you guys and sort of be snotty about it, <laughs> be phony. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I suspect. What I suspect is he was the biggest phony of them all, and he, he could knew. Be. Right. <laughs> either he knew that what he was writing was garbage, or he didn't actually write anything. See, there you go again. Garbage. This isn't garbage, man. It, it's not, it's, look, I did not enjoy reading this book. Um, yeah, it, it was not, it was not a fun ride. Um, and I just, I don't, I don't understand the appeal. Like I said, I feel a little bit of empathy for the character, but at the end of the day, he's still like a major dick bag to everyone. And like, why? I just don't understand why you would create that character and then have him spew thought garbage for 250 pages. You said well, garbage okay. again. Ansel, Ansel's, Ansel's going to get upset. Hold on. No, it's not, think, uh, it's not, it's not entirely garbage it has its it has its moments i mean uh and i will say that the ease of reading this i mean even even with the curse and it is sort of a very oh what do you call it free thought you know one line of one line of uh thought process uh like uh william faulkner does in some of his stuff this was way easier to read now do i feel do I feel like I've I've finally found an American classic afterwards? Not necessarily. Not really. I mean, it's good. Uh, I think if you're from New York, maybe you get something out of it that we're not getting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I mean, I really have to agree with Dylan that the the character itself is the biggest put off from the book. And well, see, I, I would and I'm I would left say that with the for question a of. Um, well, I'm left with the question of wh- what is it about this book that made people shoot people? Apparently, I don't. Uh, well, to right. be fair, I, I, that I, that... I did kind of want to shoot people after after I read it. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I mean, I think it was just so popular. It's like I think 
I think I might have uh, mentioned before, like if you if you go through somebody's, uh, you know, like a, a somebody who murders somebody, and you go to their home and look at their bookshelves, they probably have like chicken soup for the soul or something like that, something that's, <laughs> you know, so hokey. And that doesn't, I mean, you know, uh, correlation does not mean causation. It doesn't mean that chicken soup for the soul makes people murder murder people. I mean, it's just, uh, it was just a really popular book at the time, you know? It's like saying uh, Harry Potter. It's like, oh, yeah, Harry Potter is uh, you know, all this magic stuff drives people no, no, crazy. No, 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 is that right, Dylan? I, I, I thought the guy who, well, uh, I thought the guy who shot John Lennon like linked it to the book, and then uh, the guy who tried to shoot Reagan is that? Am well, I just coming guy, up with that on my own? No, no, no. The guy, the guy that shot Lennon, um, I believe the story is he, the day that he did it, he went and bought a copy of it, and. Um, he had it on him, and inside he had written, "This is my statement," and he, he like he signed it from Holden Caulfield to Holden Caulfield. So he was a uh, uh, he was a nutbag. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. I'll go with that. Okay. So, and the Reagan assassination attempt did. No, that was the guy that said, "What's the frequency, Kenneth?" That had nothing to do. Never mind. Well, no, Never like he, that was uh, the REM he did thing. have, he did have a copy of the book, but it wasn't. He didn't sign it to Holden like, Caulfield. From it was Holden among Caulfield. other books, right? It, the John, John Hinckley Jr. He, um, was, I think that's kind of like what Ansel was saying. Like he just had the book. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So it was it was one nutbag that that shot John Lennon and said, I think, "Hey, look, did I've Salinger have book. like a nemesis? Was like um, was uh, I, don't, I, I don't, can't think of his contemporaries off the top of my head. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Did he hate Salinger and did he you know sort of get this rumor out that only <laughs> serial killers read Salinger? Maybe that's why he started writing in in you know with, without in the publishing. closet. I don't know." <laughs> Yeah, in his closet. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know well, about I guess, his, uh, his contemporaries. I, I haven't looked up any of that at all. I think he looked up to F. Scott Fitzgerald quite a bit. Actually, yeah, I think he mentioned him in, in the Catcher in the Rye, if I remember correctly. Like, um, although I don't, the, you know, the Little Shirley Beans. That's not an actual song, is it? Because he kind of mixed in like fictional artifacts with like real writers and and stuff like that but this this record that he bought for his sister that's not a song that i'm familiar with have, have either uh, of you I've, ever heard uh, little shirley beans no i haven't but i bet i bet it's real i found the uh i found the 1940s rendition of the uh the song the catcher in the rye and tried to listen to it uh it's it's a little hard for me to listen to i don't it's a very soprano voiced woman doing all the fluttering and and things and uh so I listened to about 45 seconds of it that's that's a real thing and I don't know why he would just make up another song called Little Shirley Beans I mean I'm sure it's there Well I mean I guess we could we could this is something we could uh google.com later but I, I forgot what my point of, of bringing that up was uh Anyway, and I don't, I don't think I'll remember, but um, I, I did just think that there, there was a story I would like to, uh, you know, uh, so, something that happened while reading it. I would like to mention now, just for, for you know, for posterity. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a I, when I when I just started reading it, um, my daughter Sadie was sitting next to me, and it was a, the page about how his brother DB writes short stories, and he wrote this one about. Um, he wrote the short story about a kid who bought this goldfish but wouldn't let anybody else see it because he bought it with his own money and he didn't want anybody else to see it, right? You guys remember that mm-hmm. part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, while, while I was reading it, Sadie was reading that page too, and she pointed out to me that my son Noah was doing the exact same thing because he had bought this Wii U game <laughs> and he wouldn't let Maggie play it because he bought it with his own money. It was uh, the... 
Captain Toad game for for Wii U, and Zadie was like, "Oh, oh, oh, Noah's doing the same thing." He's like, "He's not, he's not letting uh, Maggie see it." Just like this guy, I was like, "Well, that's pretty cool." So uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was a good observation on on Sadie's part to, uh, but yeah, she shouldn't be reading Salinger. <laughs> Oh. Well, um, uh, Little Shirley Beans is a real thing. It is. Did you look it up? Yeah, I did. It's it's a real thing. Okay. It's a, it, it's, it's a song apparently, and I, and I think he talks about it being a single, uh, uh, forty five or whatever they had back then. Yeah, it was expensive. I think he paid five dollars for that because it was a uh, kind of rare. Now, I was but I mean, nineteen forty five. Couldn't you get like a car for five dollars? Just about. I mean, I think like that's the thing about Holden Caulfield. You guys are you guys are like half glass empty types because like every 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 time he treats somebody poorly, he does something like buying a you know a record for his sister. You know, just because you know just just because he's not okay. okay give me three like other jerk, examples like of three other examples of good things that he did. <laughs> um. He didn't sleep in that dude's bed when Ackley told him not to. Hmm. Okay. He okay. A good thing that he did. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just drawing did he sell his typewriter later. at a huge discount to that guy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll, I'll allow that one. Yeah. Uh, wasn't he trying to? Uh, <laughs> educate the cab drivers on or or actually no he was he was asking for what happened to the ducks uh and during the winter time so i he forgot about what education. happened to the ducks <laughs> i completely it's only been a anyway, couple yeah. weeks since he, i finished it and i completely forgot about the him asking everyone what happened to the ducks well it's good to know like the, I, the I, will cab say, says, I will say uh, go ahead dylan no, you go ahead. I'll I'll follow up after you. Oh, I was just going to say it's good to it's cool to learn that you know the fish in the winter time just freeze and they absorb nutrients through the ice. <laughs> that was cool to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, stuff like I mean that that's what I was saying. Like it's so s- stupid and funny sometimes that it's just really it, it's a nice balance, perfect balance of funny, ridiculous, you know, deeply unsettling and. And sad, all you know, all at once, the whole book. So that I mean, and that's that's kind of what I go for in a book. So, you know, well, Salinger, Salinger's the, the got one, a. Uh, go ahead. The one redeeming quality of this cat is basically that he, and I believe this is pretty much what the entire book is about. He. He's afraid of growing up. He's he's afraid of becoming an adult. And he sees that as a... What's the word? A, uh, a like, like dying, pretty much. He, and he wants to protect kids from this awful fate of growing old. And I think he kind of has like a, a yeah, little well, bit I of think, a I mean, there Peter was... Pan syndrome. No, I mean, I, I see where you're going. Like, he did say something like he doesn't want to be these people who talk about cars and, you know, pay mortgage and go to see stupid movies and stuff like that. But I think mm. it's it's not a, like a, a fear of getting older. I think he just doesn't really get human nature. You know what I mean? I just think, like, just norm, normal stuff that people do is sort of, like, off-putting and terrifying to him. And I think his teacher, who uh, I can't remember the teacher's name, but uh, you know the, the the teacher who lets him stay at his house. I think he correctly identifies that. He's like, well, there are people in history who are just as just as put off by all this stuff as you are, uh, and you can learn from them. You know, he's really kind of putting him on the right path. You know what I mean? I think that's what it was. He just he didn't know he was trying to make sense of stuff that can't be made sense of. If that if that makes sense. Yeah, it uh, it totally escaped me until until Dylan just said that with the the Peter Pan thing. You know, he goes all ballistic when he sees the um, the uh, the fu written all over. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep this PG thirteen, but 
you know, every time he sees uh, graffiti with uh, obscenities, he just he goes he goes ape shit over it basically. And I believe he even says something about you know kids are going to be here and kids are going to read this and this is just terrible. Well, I want I want to kind of shift the conversation. Uh, actually, I'm, I just want to ask: is there is there actually a Catcher in the Rye movie? Like I didn't research that. No, no, Have no. You guys seen it or does it exist? Uh, J D. Salinger he has put the kibosh on Catcher in the Rye in other formats. Um, since he has passed away. Uh, his, I think his, I don't know, his family's so messed up. Like, I I think his, one of his wives or maybe one of his daughters has the rights to it. And they can, like, they have it as like a, uh, insurance plan. Like if they ever need to cash that out. Right. But no, That's, while he was alive, he he did not allow a, a film adaptation to be made. And I think that's um, I, I think that was um, good on Salinger because I don't think you could actually make a movie of this. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure that they would try if they had the rights, but I don't think you can pull this off. You know what I mean? Because it's so much inner monologue. See, I yeah, was thinking I would enjoy it a little bit more as a as a movie. That way I would only waste like an hour of my life instead of <laughs> several hours over the course of a week. A, a Wes Anderson film though, yeah. 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 I could I could see that. And even still like I mean like who would you get to play Holden Caulfield if you if you if you were the the casting director or whatever? Who do you think would would pull us off. I guess, I guess all of us were kind of like we're not hip to like teenage actors probably, but <laughs> like if you could take any actor in any era and make them a teenager for this role, who do you think would would make it work best? I think a uh uh Jonathan Taylor Thomas, I think he would make a good Holden Caulfield. Uh, who who is that? <laughs> he's a he, dude from. Uh, he's a kid on Home Improvement, the the Dreamboat. Oh. <laughs> okay. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Michael I, Sarah just popped to mind for me. Nah, there you go. That would be yeah. I don't know. Michael Sarah is just he's he's funny in everything he does. Even when he's not fun, I just I can't see him and not see Arrested Development. It's yeah, maybe maybe you're, I don't know. I was just I was just putting it out there. But it's it's a good you know one. what you know what they probably do though. Like if they did make a movie, they would kind of make it some like phony action movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> to, to, if you want if if you want to know the truth, they always make movies into phony action movies. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The Catcher in the Rye, like, directed I, by Michael Bay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The people will clap like, at the wrong part. I I am sick of this motherfucking catcher and this motherfucking ride. <laughs> oh, you know, since we mentioned Wes Anderson, I can only think of the kid that that was uh, the kid in Rushmore. I mean, I, I, I yeah, basically Jason, Jason, like, Jason Schwartzman. Yeah, I mean, I basically feel like that's that character uh, taken out of the catcher in the rye and put into a different setting in a, a much happier sort of story but uh he would be perfect well i don't know you know what i'm I, th- I think i might watch rushmore again with the commentary i never listened to the commentary tracks for dvds but i i would bet that they mention the catcher in the rise as maybe a an inspiration i can totally see that yeah you would think so it has a lot of the same uh hipster feel to it i guess you would say you guys want to know you you want to have your minds blown please sure uh rushmore turns 20 years old next year oh shit that means bottle rockets even older oh yeah (laughs) 
I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> My mind is uh, intact. I'm, it's not <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> like, I know, like a bunch of music that I, I listened to as a as a teenager. Uh, uh, a lot of it is turning twenty years old, so mm. um, it's not that's not surprising to me. I don't sorry. know. I, I guess I guess the the movie aged a little bit better in my mind like it doesn't maybe it's because Wes Anderson has that kind of cohesive style through all of his movies so you're saying it hasn't aged as much is that what you're saying right like as far as the style and the I guess the quality of the film isn't isn't that far off from a, a Grand Budapest Hotel yeah, and, I, and maybe I that's why, that. maybe that's why it doesn't seem as as old in my mind. I uh, I follow the comedian Nick Kroll on uh, Instagram. Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That guy's hilarious. He, yeah, he he posted something just a couple of days ago. It just it was just said like Rushmore like a hundred times, just like Rushmore, Rushmore, Rushmore. That's all it said, and and then people were commenting like their I guess their favorite lines. Of course, it was like, oh, are they? For you know, every other <laughs> comment. <laughs> But um, I don't know. I just thought that was weird, and you reminded me of it talking about Rushmore. Hmm. Maybe it was the first time he had seen it, and he just couldn't couldn't contain himself. I don't know. Or, or maybe he was watching football, and he was angry <laughs> at the play calling, and he wanted them to rush more. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. <laughs> I guess uh, maybe Nick Kroll will make it clear what it what his what his intention was. If you're Nick Kroll, uh, later you're Instagram post. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, the um, catcher in the rye. I think I think we've kind of we've kind of gone yeah. awry a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we drop it, <laughs> bef- before we um, put it in our respective bookshelves, or in Dylan's right. case, burn it. Um, Right. I, I I will be reading this book again. I can tell you that much. Uh, I will not. It will happen. I will not. Sorry. I'm yeah, I, I see no reason why I should ever read this again. No, no. Okay. Well, but, um, agree to disagree. This is a book that I enjoyed. I'm giving it I, I'm giving it the gold star as my, my rating. I know I told you guys that already. Gold star. Have you guys decided what you're gonna going to award it yet? Um I, I give it three groundhogs. Um, as, as you know, it, it has three, um, three bad things for every one good thing going for it as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, yeah, I, I just think groundhogs are cute and, uh, I'll, I'll, it's cute in part. So I'll give it three groundhogs. I'll give it an, DC? I'll give it an ironic slow clap. <laughs> Is there an emoji for that? <laughs> I think I can probably make that happen somehow. Okay. <laughs> it would just, be just, like just a like clap a... and then space, 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 clap. <laughs> yeah. I can I I have uh I have the technology to to do an animated gif, so uh yeah, I can make that happen. Yeah. Well, be- before we put the nail in it, we've we've given it our reviews. Um the the opening page, the dedication page says to my mother. Um, a what an asshole to write a book like this for your mother. Um, but it's our inaugural episode of book club, and it is Mother's Day. So absolutely, man. Yeah. Good, so good for, you um, for uh, putting that together. You know, and and Dylan, I think you said mom, or was it Ansel said mom had this on the bookshelf when you grabbed it and read it. That is true. The first time I read it. Uh, I don't know exactly. I was probably about 13. Um, we were all still uh, in school. Um, and, yeah, Mom happened to have a copy of it on the shelf, and I just you know, I borrowed it for a while. I wish I still had that copy. I don't know. Or maybe Mom still has it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think, I think she's under the there. impression that you still have it. Oh. Well, I, so many I things asked, that I used to have I don't have anymore on account of. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> yeah, like going, you know, dorm room, going from dorm room to dorm room and apartment to apartment. 
Um, I, I've lost many things, and I think that was one of the things that I've lost. So I hate that. That sucks. But, you know, hey, um, you know, I was just going to say, we kind of owe this to mom. Uh, her her taste in books and her encouraging us reading and, um, yeah, just like the books that were laying around the house when we were growing up. And I think it's very apropos to um, say that we're never going to read this one again, Dylan. Uh, we're done with it. Yeah. I yeah. hope she's proud. I'll of read us. it again. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We We know you love it. It's... But you're wrong. But it's your week. All it's right, your just book. To, just, just to go down this, uh, just to go down this train of thought, just a little bit. What other books in our house do you like remember growing up? Wh- which books do you do, like think back on as being a something? I don't know something you enjoyed having, um, in the in the house. Uh, Dylan, you well, go there first. was The Hobbit and The uh, Lord of the Rings, of course. Uh, and then the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and and the rest of those books. That w- those were called the the Chronicles of Narnia collection. Oh, thank you, I thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, the mom had that old copy of the Silmarillion, which I mean, it took me three tries to read it, but once I could read it, I I've really never been enjoyed able to it. read the Silmarillion. Yeah, it's really good, but I you will, just uh, you, you gotta you gotta want it. You really gotta want it. <laughs> and uh uh I remember uh she had that um it was our grandfather's airman's guide to the air force that he got in the 50s. And I think I sat on the toilet and read that book cover to cover probably 12 times in my childhood. And uh it's not interesting at all. It was just stupid military shit, but I don't know why that book I can still see the cover and everything. But I mean she had so many cool things in that in those bookshelves that I never read. I never read the what did you say the the Chronicles of the Wardrobe Witch or whatever. Yeah, that's that's yeah. it. Didn't didn't read. Narnia is uh, Spanish for wardrobe witch. Yeah, so, that's yeah. that's. I mean, I remember my Spanish class, but um, no, never touched that book. Never never read any of them. And uh, that's what I'm looking forward to as we do this stuff is to is to pick up those books that were in those bookshelves that I never picked up before. And uh, Catcher in the Rye was one of them. I'm, I'm glad I waited until now. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> you guys are both going to be, you're, you're both going to regret you didn't think of this. Okay. The two books that I remember most, um, there was a a book called Our Universe. It was like a, oh, about, yeah. it was a National oh, Geographic book. That thing was How awesome. How awesome was that book? Yeah, that was great. I love flipping through that book all the time. And then there was that, uh, I think it was also National Geographic it was like a, a book on archaeology, and it had, like, pictures of Pompeii and stuff like that. Yeah, that was my book. Um, was it yours? Yeah, Mom bought me that book. I was so into Indiana Jones that I just, she had to buy me that book. And, uh, yeah. I remember a lot of the pictures and stuff. Like, I mean, it's all pictures. Like, I don't remember actually reading any of it. But I remember, like, the um, the, the <laughs> pictures of the. I didn't read it either. You know, the, the fossilized remains of people from Pompeii. Yeah. Uh, anyway, haunting. haunting I, I don't story. remember that one as well. But as long as we're expanding the uh, the conversation to books that our brothers owned, there was a Tron pop up book that I was particularly fond of. <laughs> I yeah, remember I love that. that was my book. I love that book. I got it from that Books Unlimited place in Tupelo, birthplace of Elvis Presley. Um, that was. Um, are you yeah, sure? I remember that sh- very well. Are you sure you didn't get it at that uh, discount book place? Like where wasn't we, that it? Wasn't it Books Unlimited? Wasn't it the discount place? Oh, may have been. I was thinking of Books a Million, but that's limited. Okay, never mind. No, that was that was full retail price, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> books a Million is limited. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, it's still a lot of books, but there there is a limit. <laughs> Not at Books Unlimited. That's where we got those Star Wars bookmarks too. You remember those? I do. Mm-hmm. That was uh, all Books Unlimited. Wow. Taking our listeners down a little trip of uh, memory lane. Yeah, we we got a, we got way off track there, but that's fine. I think. Do we want to reveal the next next week's uh, title? Uh, I guess that's on me, right? It, it is, is definitely on you. All right. Well, um, I figured we would keep with this theme of uh, angry small people, and uh, and do. 
The oh, Hobbit Part name? Two. The, <laughs> the Hobbit Strikes Back. Is is there the a catcher in the right part shoes. two? <laughs> no. You think you think in, in uh in all of those <laughs> filing cabinets he's got catcher in the rye. Well, Son I, I, of catcher in the rye. I think the, the guy that shot Lennon policy. like spoiled the ending, so he didn't want to didn't want to release it after that. Ouch. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean seriously, the 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 natural path that Holden Caulfield takes, given the uh, the quality of mental health care in in the time period, like he. I don't. I don't think Holden Caulfield is going to be all right if you if you take the story. I disagree. He's getting help. He's getting treatment. He's going back to school in the fall. You guys but just don't know. What, Holden. what kind of what kind of help is he getting? Like he's getting like electroshock therapy. He's out west. Like he wanted to go out west, right? And he ended up out west. He's getting help. He's seeing his brother DB. He's kind of a phony writing for the pictures, but that's okay. Um, no, it's okay, uh, Holden's okay. gonna be so, fine, so, man. So, so mentally unstable, heading out west to Hollywood, probably. Yeah, he's, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> he's got this. Anyway, I don't even think you revealed the book, uh, Elijah. What was? Uh, oh no! What, what, what are we doing next week? Uh, we're gonna stay on this theme of angry small people, and we're gonna do the Lord of the Flies. Uh, Lord. Of the flies, Lord of the flies. I think it's a, it's a, it's about Irish, um, Irish dancing or something like that. But I, I know it's got a lot of really angry teenagers. Or that, that's all I know about it. It's never read. Yeah, it. I've, I've never read that one before. It should be, should be. Good. I never. I, I saw the. I saw like the. Uh, the it was like an older movie, probably from the sixties or seventies. But, um, I never read the book. So yeah, this will be but, new to me. I've picked up through like cultural osmosis. Don't like the kids kill each other and eat each other or something. Yeah, I think that's where it ends up going. That's that's why. I Not say all of them. No, there there are some survivors, and then they 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 all are grounded for <laughs> killing and eating some of the other kids. As far as I remember, not to spoil it, they don't get their pudding that night. All right. Well, no um, no, no, no Nintendo for two weeks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But yeah, I just figured let's uh let's I think that's kind of in the same time period, maybe a little later than the catcher in the rye. Um not sure. Yeah, I don't really know. It uh, seems later, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, I've I've never seen any of the films. I've never read the book and this uh it seems like uh it's it sort of seems like the logical place that uh we should go after wondering what happens to Holden Caulfield. Let's see if we can get a theme going, yeah. Well, all right. Uh, Lord of the Flies it is. Uh, we will – it was uh, – Dylan, Elijah, it was wonderful to book club with you guys. Um, and uh, we, We'll do this again next week with a little uh, Lord of the Flies. How's that sound? That sounds great. It sounds good to me. I'll be very ready for clubbing some books. And uh, we, got, we really got to get those bumper stickers made for our listeners. Yeah. Definitely, all three of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, tell her I said Happy Mother's Day. I will. All right. All right. Well, uh, well, let's let's close this out. Cue exit music. Uh, thank you for wasting another perfectly good hour listening to Book Club. Uh, I'm Ansel Crowder, Center Channel. I'm Elijah Crowder. Uh... Whatever channel right Ansel channel. puts me on. Right channel. Right channel. <laughs> and uh, I'm Dylan Crowder. I'm in left channel. I just want to remind everybody to uh, you follow us on Twitter at the at Book Club Cast. Uh, you can find us online, bookclubcast.com. Uh, we are on Reddit, bookclubcast.reddit.com. Uh, tell a friend. If you know somebody that likes books, likes podcasts hey that's a perfect fit tell them to join us and y'all are welcome to read uh lord of the flies as well we'll try and get a discussion going on on the subreddit and uh give us a shout out all the, all the social medias yeah all uh, links pretty to much all of our social medias are or i guess medias media is already plural so all the social media uh you can find it from our website 
uh, book class book uh, bookclubcast dot com. And you can pretty much shout into the tubes of the internet, book club cast, and you'll find us. Yes, we we uh, we make ourselves available. So uh, thank you all. Happy Mother's Day. Belated. Uh, thank you for joining.